preach the gospel. We honor the life of Dr. Jerry Savelle on the Victory Channel. Mountain International Church. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, we've come here to lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. So tonight, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. God, we are here to worship you. We're here to celebrate your goodness. We're here to receive from your word and from your spirit tonight. God, we open our hearts to receive everything that you have for us. And we believe and we receive together in that mighty, matchless name, the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord.
it said because of his humbling and his obedience that God gave him the name that is above every name that at the authority of the name of Jesus every knee will bow that's the name that we've been given thank you Lord Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are glory, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we give you glory. Jesus, we give you glory. All over the room, the name is working. The name that's above every sickness, every disease, over every situation and every condition, the name of Jesus is at work in this room right here and right now. I think we ought to just reach out and receive right now the wonder-working power of that name. Oh, Lord, we receive today. Jesus, we honor you. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. And I thank you, Lord, that even right now in this moment, you are working in this room and all over the world for the healing power of Jesus' name, the saving power of Jesus' name, the delivering power of Jesus' name is at work. We receive that now by faith. We step in to the promises that the name has provided. We honor you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn around, say hello to somebody. Tell them you're glad they came to the house of the Lord today. Praise God. Well, it's going to be a good night in the house. And whether you are here with us or whether you're watching, Anywhere in the world, from the top to the bottom, all the way around the middle, I'm telling you, it is going to be a powerful night for you. And I'll remind you, if you need prayer for anything going on in your life, at any point during this service, you can reach out and call 877-281-6297. Our licensed prayer ministers are standing by right now. They are full of faith. They are full of the word. And that's what you need. You need the word to overcome whatever it is going on in your life. And they have got the word on the inside of them and they're ready to speak it and declare it and agree with you about anything going on in your life. So give them a call, 877-281-6297. Seven. All right, a couple of quick announcements for you before we get into the Word. First of all, how good has the Word been these past couple of weeks with Pastor John? Absolutely phenomenal. I want to remind you, this coming Saturday at 8 a.m., you know where I'm going with this? In the headquarters dining room, our men's breakfast, built to last men's ministry, this Saturday, April 20th, 8 a.m., over in the headquarters dining room. We need you to register at emic.org slash events. Let us know that you are coming. It will be a powerful time in the presence of God, in the presence of our brothers as one. Amen. Make sure that you are there. And then the next day, this coming Sunday, we've got a very special guest speaker. Brother Jesse Duplantis will be in the house. That is 10 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. You are not going to want to miss it. One of our very favorites here with us at EMIC, Brother Jesse Duplantis. I am expectant. Pastor George calls Brother Jesse a vision specialist. And so I'm excited to have my vision expanded this Sunday. How about you? Bring somebody with you. Invite a friend, a neighbor, coworker, a stranger, whoever. Tell them they got to come and hear Brother Jesse this Sunday. And then a week from tonight is our Passover Seder meal. That's Wednesday the 24th at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. We'll have the tables all set up. And there are two things you need to know that are optional for you to purchase. Number one is the Seder plate itself. It's got all the elements on it there. We'll be going through uh, each individual one, talking about the significance. We've got a great program prepared. It's going to be an awesome time. Those Seder plates are $10 with all those elements there. You can share it. Don't plan to use that as dinner. It is not a substantive meal, um, but it is beautiful in what it represents. And we're going to walk through it together and really receive on this Passover Seder. So $10 buys you your Seder plate. And then because it's Texas, y'all, afterwards, we've got barbecue. So praise the Lord, Texas barbecue. I don't know where you're from, where you're watching from, but I need you to know Texas barbecue is built differently. Okay. And if you care about barbecue, you'll come on down to the revival capital of the world and experience barbecue as it's meant to be consumed. Amen. Can I get an amen from my Texans in the house? Last thing, I'm sure many of you heard the news that brother Jerry Savelle entered into his reward, went home to be with Jesus this week. And so we are excited to celebrate 
brother Jerry and the life that he lived, the faithfulness to God and the word of faith that he preached. And so his celebration is gonna be Friday, April 26th at 1.30 right here in the EMIC sanctuary. It will be streamed. We'll have more details about that coming up, but we wanna invite you to come and celebrate the life of this general of faith who heard well done, good and faithful servant. And what an honor it has been for him to be such an important part of the ministry. He was just with Brother Copeland last week at the Victory Campaign. I'm telling you, man, heaven celebrated the minute Jerry Savelle showed up. Amen. All right, it is time to receive our offering. Will you please welcome our outreach pastor, Pastor Brian Sanders. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. So I want to start right away with a scripture because... Uh, I do want to spend a little time talking about what got me here to Texas. Um, but if you have your Bibles tonight, let's turn to Psalms chapter 145, and I'm going to read verse 8 through 10. Psalms 145, 8 through 10. And it says this, the Lord is gracious, everyone say, and full of compassion. Slow to anger and great of mercy, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercy is over all his works, and thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and the saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. And I read that in reference to another quote that I'm going to make here, and this quote is this. It is impossible, it is important that you realize that Jesus is still moved with compassion. He is just as eager to meet your needs today as he was while he was here on this earth. Jerry Savell. I think I need to read it again. It is important that you realize that Jesus is still moved with compassion. And he is just as eager to meet your needs today as he was while he was on this earth. I mean, both those scriptures are so powerful. In fact, I, I want to mention this because we were in staff prayer the other day and, and uh, Pastor Al was talking about Psalms 91. And I had never heard the correlation with the next two chapters, 92 and 93 is that after we experience something as God's protection or compassion or, or a move of God in our lives, the next thing we should do is we should be given praise and thanksgiving. You know, one of the ten lepers did that very thing. As soon as he realized that the compassion of God had moved on his life, what did he do? He turned around and started praising God, and he found himself completely whole. Amen. So I had just finished one year of college, 1979-80. I came home, and uh, we were having family dinner. And uh, mom and dad said this, hey, kids, we are thinking about going down to Texas to go to Jerry Savelle's Bible School. What do you all think? And without any hesitation, right on the inside of me, I knew immediately we were supposed to go. I raised my hand, and I'm saying, I'm in. Let's go. And so we started making provisions to come down here. Uh, we had a lot to do when we got down here. So we got down here early and uh, got into school. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of college students or KCBC students in here today. And uh, even back then, um, uh, the school was called, uh, and I was class two, uh, Overcoming Faith Bible Training Center. Okay. And uh, they had practicum. And the first thing I, I realized that week two, I was up on a roof fixing shingles on a ministry building that had blew off. So even back then, students, we had practicum. And, you know, uh, if you've been around Jerry Savelle very much, he talks about his dad and what an influence that his dad was on him and teaching him about cars and, and everything. And and uh, there needed to be a private school built before the younger ones could start that school term. So he got all the students together and said, okay, my dad will teach you everything you need to know about how to build this building so we can have school, this school term. 
And from Jerry Savelle's dad, we learned how to be a carpenter and put that school up. And so there are a lot of fond memories. Um, it wasn't very long that we were into school, and Jerry Savelle said, okay, I want all the Bible students to come up here. Today, you're going to pray for the sick. And I'm thinking to myself, now, I've been raised in, in, in uh, church, but I had never done this before. And I'm standing up there thinking, what, what am I supposed to do? All right, I was, I was new at this. I was green at this. You know, and I, I'd seen my parents, I've seen others do this. But me personally, especially, you know, not knowing exactly what was going to happen or take place. So I, was, I said a quick little prayer, all right? Here I am. Lord Jesus, give me something simple. <laughs> I'm being honest. That was my prayer. I mean, some of you students have heard this before, but... I got to say it. So this little girl about this tall came up to me and said, I got a headache. And the first thing I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Something simple. Okay. I laid my hands on her, prayed for her. I said, how's your headache? She said, it's gone. Started rejoicing, thanking God for that. But immediately when she, she left me, me and the Lord had a conversation. He had more of a conversation. I was just listening, okay? And he told me this. He said, you couldn't even heal a headache if you wanted to. But he can. And right then and there, I realized that it wasn't me, but it was all about him. But if I allowed the same compassion that was in him that moved him to heal other people, then that same compassion of healing would flow out of me into another person. I wasn't even operating. I was just simply being obedient to Brother Savelle and doing what he said to do. And because of his authority, it worked. Amen? Now, you know, um, we're blessed in this church and even at KCBC to have a lot of people that come in here and speak into our lives. And, and, and Brother Savelle did the very same thing. You know, he had some of the generals, uh, Kenneth Copeland, T.L. Osborne, um, Bill Bazansky, um, uh, a lot of the greats of that time um, come in and, and speak to us. But one thing that I saw about Jerry is that when he heard the calling of God, he followed it with such a passion. And uh, if, if you have listened to any of his messages uh, this year, you know, the Lord always gives him uh, a direction and vision. And I, and I just feel because of our offering and even the time that we're living in, we need to hear that word that God gave him. And that was, and then this is it. He says, if you do these three things, all right, and here's what he said. The first of all is that we need to remain faithful. We need to remain in our faith. We, we cannot allow our faith to waver. Amen? Amen? The second thing he says is that um, we need to remain focused. Focused on the task in front of us. You know, I woke up the other day and I heard the Holy Spirit say, say this and pray this over you. Have grace to finish the race. What do I mean by that? What, what do you tell me, Lord? He says, sometimes you might need to be required to run a 100-yard dash. In other words, you've got to accomplish something very fast. And you need grace to do that. Or if I'm going to run a one-mile race, I've got to have a different grace that comes on me to, to, for endurance. And so we need to remain focused in what's in front of us. And the last thing, and it so applies to what we're dealing with and going through at this time, is that don't allow anything in this world to distract you. There are so many things every day that distract you. Now go back to our fast. We were not distracted during the fast, were we? But... I don't know about you, but I'd pick up my phone and your thumb would want to go over to a certain app. And I said, no, I'm fasting that app. And what did I do? I'd catch myself going to it 
and then clicking it off, just out of habit. And so we can't allow distractions. Why? Because the time that we live in is short. And we have a job that we've got to do. Amen? He says, if we do these things, these three things, here's what will happen. All right? We have a part in this. He says that we'll see, um, we'll see advancement. We'll see progression. We'll see promotion. In other words, he said, if we do our part, God will do his part. Amen? You know, one other thing that I saw about um, uh, Brother Jerry Savelle, you know, he said something in Bible school while I was there, and it just stuck with me. He said this, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. You know, some of the things that are said to us are so simple, we miss it. It doesn't get any simpler than that, especially when it comes to our finances and our giving. He says that I will meet all your needs. All my needs are met. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I think about half of you got it. it yes, it can be that simple, y'all. God said it. I believe it. I've got it. That settles it. Amen. And so one of those things that he taught quite often about is her confession because they hung around people like Charles Capps and um, many great men like that. Um, and I don't know if that says my time is out. It probably is. It's saying all zero. It is. It's saying time is out. Oh, my goodness. God is good, is he not? I don't think they gave me enough time, but anyways, I'm be, it says time up. I'm going to be faithful to that. So, Lord, we thank you. Your word says that your gift will make a way. I thank you that there's gifts in everyone in here. I thank, thank you, Lord, that you are making a way for them in their finances and everything they have. And we give you praise and glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're giving in-house here, you give them by a check or envelope. There's an envelope in front of the seat. If you're in the front row and you want to uh, get an envelope, an usher will help you with that. Uh, if you're giving by check, make it payable to emic.org. If you're giving by text, text 36609. The keyword is emic and the dollar amount. If you're giving online, it's emic.org slash give. Uh, if you're giving by phone, 877-281-6297, they can help you with that. And, of course, if you're giving by mail, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. Amen. All right, praise and worship team.
Praise God. Come on, lift your hands. Father, in this the evening, we do praise you. We declare that you are God above every, every circumstance or situation that could ever be fathomed. Lord, that you are Lord over everything. Father, that your name is higher than every name and that you have invested all of who you are into Jesus and thereby invested all of who you are into us. Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you for it. Tonight, sir, we ask that you would show, you, show us in your word how to be everything you've called us to be, how to do everything you've called us to do, how to have everything you've called us to have. We ask for grace upon grace. Father, we ask that you would show us how to live the life victorious the way you intended for us to live it. And Father, I pray for utterance tonight. God, that you would think through my, mouth, my mind and speak through my mouth that this word tonight would go forth unchecked. Father, that it would impact the hearer in such a way that we would become doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, we give you glory and honor. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Glory to God. Praise God. Part three of our series, The Blood, the Word, and the Name. And um, I'm really excited. You know, the Lord has really helped, uh, helped us during this series. And I, I just want to take a moment uh, and thank our pastors, uh, Pastor George and Pastor Terry. And here's the reason why. I want to thank them for tuning in and listening to what the Holy Spirit would have us study and look into for such a time as this. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's good to come up. Sometimes you can come up with good ideas, right? Like you can, uh, the, this would be nice to teach. And what if we taught on that? But when you hear from the Lord right, right, there you go. and you know that this is where the finger of God is. And I so appreciate them uh, because this is where the finger of God is. And, and um, the instruction that I got uh, was to teach this, this uncompromised word, the, uh, a solid word of faith, a solid word rooted in the word of God that can be used uh, in this time and in this season. And uh, my, my prayer through all of this has been that this would be an impartation of grace. Uh, the thing about grace is if you don't do nothing with it, then it's not operational. You got to be a doer of the word. You have to take what has been taught here and put it into action. And by putting it into action, you get the results of the word of God. You can be a hearer and not a doer and then end up with no results. Doers get results. Doers get results. That's profound. We can stop right there. You just write that down. Praise God. There's nothing that doing is not a bad word in the Word of God. In fact, uh, the Word of God says faith without works is dead. So you got to do something. You got to work it. You got to work it by faith. Um, and so we're going to get into the name uh, tonight. And, and I know I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do a preamble here. I know uh, that the expectation may be to get into all of the redemptive names of God. And I really want to do that. Trust me. I only have a certain amount of time. Um, I want to take you through all those, but then we'd be here until tomorrow evening and then two days from now, and y'all be mad at me for keeping you overnight. That would be not a good thing. So I don't want to do that. Um, I, 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 and I asked the Lord strategically, where would you like for me to point my attention? There's so much in the name of Jesus. There's so much in the names of God. There's so much, uh, there's so much revelation. There's so much empowerment that we have as the body of Christ. And God uh, was very faithful. And so we're going to dive in there uh, in just a moment. But before we do, uh, like uh, Pastor Stephen said and uh, Pastor Brian said, I think I would be remiss without uh, mentioning that this week we received news that a mighty man of faith went home to be with the Lord. A mighty man of faith went home to be with the Lord. A, a teacher of the Word of God, a preacher of righteousness, um, teaching uh, the principles that, that govern the favor of God, mighty man of faith. And I want to read to you what Brother Copeland said uh, about Jerry Savelle. 
He said, Jerry and I have been together for over 55 years. We have never had a crossword between us. Our families are intertwined with each other. He was my first preaching partner other than Gloria. He began in this ministry by driving me to my meetings, setting up the equipment and making the tapes. His first assignment was during the Jesus Revolution. He won so many to the Lord at Pismo Beach, California. Jerry Savelle is now in heaven with his Savior. He will always be dear to my heart. Glory to God for that. Glory to God for that. We didn't lose Jerry Savelle. We know exactly where he is. And Brother Savelle's legacy lives on uh, today. As long as there's someone teaching and preaching this uncompromised word of faith, as long as there's someone with faith in their mouth and the word in their heart and declaring the goodness of God and the truth of the word of God, that legacy lives on. And so I just want to take a moment to appreciate everything that Brother Savelle did for the body of Christ while he was here in the earth. And I want to appreciate how that legacy will carry on propelling the body of Christ until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. Uh, Pastor Terry uh, said this. She sent me a message and she said that, that she was reminded of this. We live by faith. We walk by faith. We die by faith. And a glorious heaven is our home. Faith is the answer to everything. Faith in the Word of God and faith in the Word of God alone is the answer to everything. There's not one thing that you can get in the kingdom of God without using faith. Every promise in the Word of God, the Word says that every promise in the Bible, every promise of God is yes and amen, which means you have to not just say amen, so be it, but you got to believe it. You got to believe that the promise belongs to you. And I'm, I praise God that this is a ministry that teaches faith. I praise God that this is a ministry that teaches, uh, that teaches that fear and faith can't cohabitate. You can't be afraid and live by faith at the same time. You have to recognize when the two are coexisting at once and we have to deal with fear. That's why the Lord instructed me to go on an offensive where fear is concerned in every one of these sessions because you cannot allow. We don't have time and nor can we afford as the body of Christ to entertain fear. You don't, we, don't, we don't have time. There's too much to do. There's too much to enforce. There's stands to be taken. There's, uh, there's word to be stood on. And, and, and this ministry is responsible for teaching people how to take a word from God, stand on it by faith, and walk it out to victory. I believe that every person that takes the word of God stands on that word in faith and walks that word out to victory and refuses to be moved from that position of faith will overcome. Why? Because you are already an overcomer. That is the process of seeing overcoming in every situation. And so uh, before we get into the name, I want to deal with fear. And I want to do that um, by uh, pointing out something that Brother Copeland teaches. And he teaches this, that the master fear is the fear of death. The ma How many of you have heard, heard Brother Copeland teach that? The master fear is the fear of death. Well, Pastor John, I'm not afraid to die. I'm just afraid of roller coasters. Why? Well, because the roller coaster might go off the track and we may all die. It, <laughs> I'm not afraid to die. I'm just afraid of airplanes. Why? Well, the airplane may crash and we may all die. You take care of the master fear. You take care of the undercurrent of fear. And then fear has no foundation to build on. So what we're doing by launching this offensive against fear is we are dismantling the foundational thoughts and the foundational operations of fear. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 in the New Living Translation. I want to read this to you in the New Living Translation because I like the way uh, it reads. It says this, Because God's children are human beings, made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood 
For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Now listen to this. Only in this way could he set free. Say set free. free. Could he set free all who had who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. What is death? The worst case scenario. And it's the fear of the worst case scenario that prompts us to live a life governed by and decisions made by what we're ultimately afraid of. But this scripture says that God himself in Jesus defeated the enemy who was the master of death. And by doing so, he set free every individual, every individual that has ever been controlled by the fear of dying. Here's the question. Are you willing to take hold of that freedom? Are you willing to take hold of that freedom? It's truly a question of faith. You know why it's a question of faith? Because it's a question of what you believe. Do you truly believe that heaven is glorious? Do you truly believe that Jesus exchanged places for you and now heaven is your eternal home? Do you truly believe that when you depart this body, to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. If you truly believe those things, then it'll make you counteract the fear of death at every turn because the worst situation that the enemy could throw at you has now become the best case scenario for you. It's not that you're rushing. Trust me. We're not, you're not looking for an opportunity to depart the earth. But his best card, his, his, uh, his, his number one play has been dismantled. The best thing he's got in his arsenal has absolutely been unraveled. Now, everything else falls since that foundation has crumbled. Why? Because the foundational fear is the fear of death. But the question is, are you going to accept that by faith? We have to understand our position in the name of Jesus and that that position has afforded us freedom from fear, a full freedom from fear. Understand this, that the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus has no reason to fear. As the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have no reason to be afraid of anything. You have no reason to be afraid of anything. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this, and this is the Amplified Classic. For our sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin so that in and through him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Understand that Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin with all of your sin. I'm going to stop there for a moment because we like to think about that as he became sin with all of sin generally. No, no, no. He became sin with the lie you told in 1987. He became sin with the thing that you don't tell nobody. He became sin. You got to personalize it. He became sin with your sin, with my sin. He became sin individually for every believer. When you got saved, your sin, not just sin in general, but your sin was atoned for by the blood of Jesus. So the Word of God says, He became, He who knew no sin became sin with our sin, so that we who knew no righteousness could become righteous with His righteousness. Let me say it a different way. We 
who had degrees of sinfulness. Traded our degrees of sinfulness with his degree of righteousness. So the same amount of righteousness that dwells in him is the same amount of righteousness that dwells in you because he became sin with the same amount that dwells in you and paid for it on the cross. So you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There's not one thing that he has not atoned for. Nothing left out. Now, the reason I said that is to set up this next scripture. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The, the who? The righteous run to it and are safe. The righteous. Anybody qualify? The righteous, the right, you got to, you have to believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this scripture tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it, and they are what? Safe. This word strong is, means material strength, physical strength, personal strength, social strength, political strength. I thought that was interesting. But it also means this, boldness, power, might, security, and get this, force. Force. You can't run to this tower by, without using your faith. But when you do, the force of faith is against your enemy. This is not a defensive move only, this is an offensive strategic position. Anyone who studies military science will tell you that the elevated position over the enemy is always the most strategic. This gives you a strategic advantage over the enemy in all things. This word safe means to be set securely on high. It means to be exalted. There's another high word. It means to be high in terms of prosperity. It means to be high uh, and removed from capture. It means to be inaccessibly high. So you have not only been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but when you exercise your faith in that righteousness, there is a name that you can run to that is high above every name. And in running to that name, you are securely set at an advantageous position over the enemy from which you can exercise your authority and thwart his attacks every single time. You have nothing to be afraid of. So tonight I want to talk about the name of Jesus and the position and power of that name. The position and power of that name. Psalm chapter 110 verses 1 and 2 says this, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. The word strength there is the same word used in Proverbs. that It says the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It means the same thing. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And this says, use that strength to rule. You use that strength. What strength? The strength of the name that you have been named with to rule. Now watch this. It says this, that until, you, until he makes your enemies your foot, his footstool. The word footstool there means something for your feet or something to stamp upon. It necessarily indicates something beneath you. So there are two positions. There's a high position and a low position. There's a high position and a low position. Tonight we're going to talk about those two positions and we're going to talk about it until I'm done. There's a high position and a low position. Say it with me. There's a high position 
and a low position. <coughs> you can't be in both at the same time. You can't be in both at the same time. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you can't be in both at the same time. It's just not possible. So if I'm standing here and Adonai, one of our KCBC students who's about ready to graduate, glory to God. You counting the days? Glory to God. I believe you are. If I'm standing here and Adonai is there and I said this, Adonai, stay right there, but come over here. <laughs> Why y'all laughing? Why y'all laughing? Adonai, stay in that seat, but come here. Is that possible? Now, it seems like this is real elementary, but I'm trying to illustrate a spiritual truth to you that the Word of God outlines meticulously. You cannot be, this is the reason why you can't say things like, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You can't be both at the same time. First and foremost, the statement is incomplete. You're not just a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner and you were saved by grace through faith. Grace provided it, faith took it. The second thing though, and I understand the sentiment, I, I used to be a sinner and grace rescued me. I took that by faith. But you can no longer claim to be in both positions at the same time. You're either going to operate from the position of a sinner or the position of someone who is saved by grace through faith. We're talking about how you operate and where you operate from. We oftentimes say these words, we don't operate for victory, we operate what? From victory. You can't be victorious and defeated at the same time. You can't be victorious and trying to win the victory at the same time. You're one or the other. You're one or the other. Many of you went to work today. You got off work and you came here. If you're watching this and you're still at work, we're praying for you. <laughs> but you're no longer at work. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> Somebody said amen. You're no longer at work. You're where? You're here. You're here. So the two positions can't happen at the same time. We often, uh, we've, I've heard people say this, I can't be in two places at what? One time. Wish I could, but I can't be in two places at one time. Pastor George referred to this on Sunday morning, this past Sunday morning. What an amazing sermon this past Sunday morning. And if you didn't get a revelation of your victory from listening to that Sunday morning sermon, you need to go listen to it again and again and again. I was driving through the state of Alabama, and if I could have stopped my car and ran, I would have. But Alabama state troopers don't like that. All right. Pastor George referred to it in his sermon the four walls of protection, the blood, the word, the name, and the angels. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 says this, He who dwells, and this is the Amplified Classic, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable. Say amen. amen. And fixed. Say amen. amen. What are the, what's stable and fixed? Unmoved. In the position, not out of position, stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can withstand. How many foes? None. 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. He says this, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God on him, I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. There's your faith. So Pastor Jaime, our, uh, our Spanish pastor, came to me today, and he brought me, he said, I, I was not going to bother you because I know you're prepping, but I just had to tell you this. He said, I found a translation in Spanish, and he said, I think you should know about it. Spanish translation is called La Palabra de Dios para ti which means the Word of God for you, right? And he says it outlines four distinct names of God in Psalm 91, 
verses 1 and 2. It says that those four distinct names are El Elyon, and it says it. It doesn't, you don't have to go study it. It says it. El Shaddai, Yahweh, and Elohim. And all four of those indicated in the first two verses of Psalm 91. You've got four names of God enforcing your protection in two verses of Psalm 91. And the one that I really want to talk about is El Elyon because that word literally means the highest or the high God. Or in other words, you don't get any higher than the most high. You can't be any higher than the most, the most high. Psalm 91 verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness. He trusts and relies on me knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. This is why this is the solvency for fear. How much do you rely on what God has said about you? How much do you believe what God says about you? This word where he says he has set, uh, I, I will, uh, he has set his love upon me. That word set is the word for devotion. And it indicates our devotion for God. In other words, I'm so devoted to what God says about me, I am absolutely ignoring everything else and focused on him face to face. I'm devoted to him and what he says about me. I'm not looking at the news to determine whether or not we are all going to be destroyed. I'm not looking at the political situation to determine whether or not I'm going to be able to feed my kids. This is how you use the Word of God and your position in the name of Jesus to enforce what the Word says despite what you see in pop, in pop culture. I'm not looking at that to determine who I am. I'm focused on the one whose name I'm in. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If then, I love it when the Bible says stuff like that. I love it when the Bible says stuff like that. This is the Amplified Classic. I love it when the Bible says stuff like that. Because when the Bible says stuff like that, if then, that means you need to pay attention. Because if you really believe this, then you're going to get the benefit. I, I got any, y'all are quiet this evening. I got any faith people in the, in the room? Anybody believe this? Anybody believe this? Yeah. This is not, listen, this lifestyle is not just cute, it's effective. Yeah. You can be cute while you're doing it, but it's effective. <laughs> All right? It's effective. And you know the cutest thing you've ever seen? Something that's effective. Amen. This gets results. This is effective. He said, if then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. It's almost like saying, if that's really true, that you've been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing his resurrection. He says, in that case, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are where? Above. You can't be in both places at once. That's good. That's good. You can't be focused on both places at once. Amen. You're going to have to set, you can't aim at both. You're going to have to set your aim above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. Watch this. For as far as the world is concerned, you have died. You've done all the dying you're going to do. And your new, and I love the Amplified Classic here, it says that your new and your real life, your real life. You ever told somebody something and you said, no, 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 look, in real life, <laughs> you ever watched a movie and said, no, listen, in real life, this person is married to that person, right? 
That means that whatever you were watching may appear real, but it's not real. There's a truth that trumps the real. Amen. Or the truth that trumps the fact that you just saw. In your real life is hidden with Christ in God, and it says He's above, and you are to set your sights, set your affections, set your devotion, set your heart, set your aim above where He is because you've already been hidden with Christ in God. You can't be found. You don't play hide and seek with God. You've been hidden with Christ in God. To what degree is Jesus in God? Jesus said, I and the Father are what? One. They're not separable. And you've been hidden with him in God. You can't be separated. You remember when the Word of God says, what can separate us from the love of God? It was the force of this union that you have with God. But that union is a covenant union. That union is a covenant union. Look at verse 17, same chapter. Same chapter, verse 17 says this, and whatever you do, say whatever, whatever. and whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon his person, giving praise to God the Father through him. You are to do everything that you do in full reliance and dependence on Jesus and what his name represents. You're not to do it in your name. Why? You can't get it in your name. But when you do it in his name, it demands the fullness of all that he is. And just in case we don't get to the scripture, it's kind of a spoiler alert, but there is scripture here where um, the, 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 the um, definition for the name literally indicates the reputation that the name carries and everything that the name signifies. He has a reputation for bringing you out. Praise God. That could have gotten a better amen. I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm endeavoring to teach this more than preach this, but I just want you to go inside your knower. And if you can't give me a yes, amen, hallelujah, just wave your hand a little bit, all right? He, he is faithful and has a reputation for rescuing you. He has a reputation for bringing you out. He has a reputation for not leaving you in your mess. Oh, look, I got ahead of my, script, ahead of my um, notes because I looked down and the word in literally means in, by, or with, but the word name, and I want to read this to you. It says, the name is used for everything which the name covers. Everything, the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering the name, i.e. for one's rank, authority, interest, pleasure, command, excellence, and deeds. So the question you have to ask yourself is this, what does the name of Jesus cover? Now, wait a minute before you say everything. Are you right? All right, I won't let you cheat on the test. You're right. What does the name of Jesus cover? What authority is found in the name? What does it bring to remembrance and what does the rank of the name of Jesus indicate? Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 in the Amplified Classic. It's a lot of scripture in the Amplified Classic, but I want to give you something you can use. All right? You can't just go outside yelling at the devil in your name. You, you got to stop rebuking stuff in your own right. You, are, you can't be in both positions. He says this, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. This harkens back to the scripture we read at first, that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin on your behalf so that you who knew no righteousness could become righteous 
with his righteousness. Now watch how that righteousness operates. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him. There's that position again. Highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. He has a name that is above every name. That in and at. I love the fact that the Amplified Classic separates out these two because it means that when I do it in his name and when I say his name, invoking the name, the name of Jesus, every knee should and must bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Watch. And every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This indicates what the name covers, the rank that the name has, what the name indicates, and it's not just the name, it's his name. It's his name. Brother Hagen, in this book, The Name of Jesus, um, says this, that uh, in the name of Jesus, there is all authority, power over demonic spirits, the highest rank that there is and nothing that the name does not cover. And Jesus received this name in three ways, by inheritance, by bestowal, and through conquest. So I want to I wanna read this to you. We carry this book in the bookstore if you'd like to grab it. It says this, in Paul's prayer for the church, he stated that God had raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named. By his conquest, these principalities, powers, might, and dominion, Jesus obtained that name. Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open show of them, triumphing over them, in it, the cross. Another translation, like I want you to listen to this. Another translation says he disarmed the principalities and powers which fought against him. Any principalities and powers fighting against you were disarmed by him. The Phillips translation says Jesus exposed them, shattered them, empty and defeated in his own triumphant victory. The Rotherham, the, uh, the Rotherham translation says Jesus paralyzed them. These are the same principalities and powers that are spoken of in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The principalities and powers we wrestle against are the same ones that he overcame, that he spoiled, that he put to naught. Bringing to naught means to reduce to nothing. As far as we're concerned, he reduced them to nothing. No wonder he said, in my name, you will cast out demons. Reduced them to nothing. Reduce them to nothing. And Jesus has given us power of attorney Amen. to use that name. I want you to listen to this. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, the Amplified Classic says, I assure, you, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he himself will be able to do the things that I do. <coughs> and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Watch this. And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. I want you to notice in those brackets, the words I am are capitalized, which means you present the I am when you pray in his name. So in the name of Jesus is not a tagline to end your prayer. It's a position that you take on what you just prayed. This is the reason why we can't pray things that are not found in the Word of God because you can't ask according to your will what you want. You have to ask according to His will. But when you ask according to His will and you say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, think about what we say. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So in other words, in the position and the authority and presenting all that Jesus is, the great I am, let it be. So that the Father may be glorified and extolled through the Son. Yes, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name as presenting all that I am. So there's some things you can't ask and present Jesus. I can't pray against a brother or a sister in Christ and present Jesus. Why? Well, because that's not walking in love. That doesn't mean that I can't pray against activity. It doesn't mean that I can't take a stand against unrighteousness. But we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. The principalities and powers have already been dismantled. So when I stand praying, I have to pray in alignment with his will. But when I do, I bring the I am on the scene. And praying in his name gets his results. It's his results. If you're praying in his name for healing according to the word of God, Jehovah Rapha shows up. You're praying for provision in the name of Jesus according to the word of God. Jehovah Jireh shows up. There's no name higher and no operation higher than when he shows up on the scene. Matthew 28, 18 and 19 says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority. How much authority? All. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Go therefore. Go therefore. What does that mean? Why is go therefore there after a full stop of all authority? Because the authority authorizes the go. That's, yes. right. That's, good. That's good. In other words, you've been given the authority to go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I think I'm supposed to stop there. Yeah, you're right, I'm supposed to stop there. Mark chapter 16, same account. <laughs> Can't blame prompter for it. Starting in verse 15 says this, And he said to them, Go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Same commission. He who is baptized and he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Now watch the authority of this name. And these signs will follow those who believe. What punctuation is that after the word believe? A colon. Which means these are the signs that are going to follow those who believe. And then he's going to tell you how. How do we get signs, wonders, and miracles? In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, I want you to watch this in action. So then... After the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Where was he received? Right. Wait a minute, you missed a word though. He was received in heaven, but there's another word. Up. Can't occupy both positions. He wasn't received just into heaven. He was received up, strategic position. He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. You're seated with him in that same position. Yes. And they went out where? In that position, in that name. And preached everywhere. And watch what happened. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs, let it be. Amen. 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 Some translation says the Lord partnered with them. Partnered with them. This is why partnership is so extraordinary. Because the Lord becomes your partner when you're in the name. And when you become someone else's partner, you add that spiritual dynamic where the Lord is working with the two of you 
in that same name to bring about whatever it is that you're doing according to the will of God. This is why your tithing is important. This is why your attendance at church is important. This is why your attendance with one another, your praying for one another is so important. The Bible says they'll be known by their love, what? One for another. And if, if there's ever a time where love could be demonstrated in a manner to where you can't confuse it, it's right now. The church of the living God has got to get a revelation of the fact that God will partner with you when you're in his name. But you can't be in his name and in strife with your brother. You can't be in his name and going, well, you know, I don't just don't like going over there to church. Praise God. All right, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> brother, brother Hagen, page number one of this book. Well, yeah, it's page number one. It's after the foreword. He says this, E.W. Kenyon begins his book, The Wonderful Name of Jesus, with this personal account. One afternoon, while giving an address on the name of Jesus, a lawyer interrupted me, asking, this is E.W. Kenyon talking, do you mean to say that Jesus gave us power of attorney, the legal right to use his name? I said to him, brother, you're a lawyer and I'm a layman. You tell me, did Jesus give us power of attorney? He said, if language means anything, then Jesus gave the church the power of attorney. Then I asked him, what is the value of this power of attorney? He answered, it depends upon how much there is back of it, how much authority, how much power this name represents. So when we say it's the name above every name, you got to understand that when you say that, the very next thought has to be, and I have power of attorney for using that name, which means I'm responsible for using that name. If you leave your card, your debit card with your child at home, 17, 16, 17, and say, order pizza for dinner, I'll be back in a few hours. And you come home and your kid goes, I'm just so hungry, I'm just so hungry. And you say, um, did you not order pizza? Well, I just, I didn't have what I need to order pizza. I left you the card. Well, well, I, I just didn't think it would work. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. This is real life. This is a real life situation right here, okay? Like take it from somebody who works in student ministries. This is, this is some stuff that really happens. Names have been changed to protect the innocent, but this stuff that really happens. You would look at them like you had everything you need to overcome your hunger, but you didn't use it. Can you just visualize the father saying, I gave you power of attorney of the most high name. There is no name higher. You have everything you need to live in victory. Why are you still living like you are low level? It's because we don't realize that we can't occupy both positions. <clears throat> you don't have to start seeing yourself the way God sees you. Not the way the world sees you. Not the way you see you. You're going to have to get God inside minded where this is concerned. So what can we do from this position of authority. Brother Copeland and Greg Stevens, God, the Covenant, and Contradiction. How many of you have read it? I encourage you to read down to the appendices, okay? In, in the appendix, or in the appendices, did I say that right? Praise God. It says Yahweh, pronounced Yahweh or Jehovah, is God's personal covenant name. Translated Lord, it is the name God uses with his friends those who are in covenant with him. While others may only know him as Elohim, to us, his covenant people, to whom he reveals himself intimately, he is our Lord. This is why here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we close our Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast and every believer's meetings that I stuck in there and our EMIC services, not by saying goodbye or we'll see you next time, but by saying Jesus is Lord. Now don't go nowhere. I know y'all trained. 
I still got six minutes. <laughs> we don't do that just because Gloria and I thought it would be a catchy phrase for our ministry. No, that's a declaration of faith in our covenant with God and the blessing of that covenant that's in the name of our resurrected Lord Jesus. Yes. By declaring in faith that Jesus is Lord over our lives, our partners, and everyone else who hears the voice of victory through our ministry, we are activating our covenant. We are declaring the blessing over people. Galatians chapter 3, verses 29 says, If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. An heir is one who receives his allotment uh, his allotted possession by right of sonship. Romans 8, 17 says, you can just write these scriptures down and you can reference them later. Romans 8, 17 says, and if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. I want to say something to you. Um, to end this, this time that we have together and to end this series, I was uh, thinking to myself, well, Lord, um, Brother uh, Pastor George said that there are four walls of protection found in Psalm 91. The, 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 the blood, the word, the name, and the angels. I'm probably only going to be able to cover three because I only got three Wednesdays. So where's that fourth one? And I was just meditating. I couldn't let it go. I was good with it, but I just couldn't let it go. And the Lord said, how do you use angelic assistance? How do you use angelic assistance? You have been made an heir. And you are an heir with his inheritance. You're a co-heir a partaker with Jesus, not an under heir or a secondary heir. You are an heir with him. So what he's an heir to, you are an heir to. Hebrews chapter 1 in verse 1 says, In many separate revelations, each one set forth in a portion of truth, and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers and in and by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us in the person of his son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. So you're a joint heir with the one that he appointed an heir. The rest of these scriptures would go on to say, and I want you to read it. Go home and read it. He says, the heir inherited Jesus as an heir inherited his name. If he inherited his name and you are a partaker in that inheritance, guess what? You inherited his name. Now, when you operate in his name, it's not a temporary position. It's a permanent identity. We are permanently identified with his name. We have permanent sonship. Your sonship is not temporary. Therefore, the name that you stand in is not temporary. Now watch what he says about that name. Are not the angels, all ministering spirits, servants, sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who inherit salvation? You have the right in the name of Jesus to command angels and you have the right in the name of Jesus to demand demons. You can demand that those principalities cease and desist and you can command your angelic assistance given to you and afforded to you by inheritance to go forth and enforce the word of God. So if I could leave you with anything, the blood of Jesus covers you and makes you righteous. The word, of G, the word of God are your articles of your covenant. And when you stand on the word unashamedly and you are unmoved and fixed in the position of the word of God in your mouth, when you say what he says, you get 
what he gets. Amen. Or say it this way, when you say what he says, you get what you say. Amen. And the name of Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead dwells. All of the Godhead dwells in that name. And you've been positioned in that name. There's nothing that can overcome the blood, the word, the name, and the angels that you have at your service. So if you're watching this and you need prayer for anything, I want to encourage you to call the phone number 877 281-6297. Maybe there's something you need coverage from the blood. You need coverage in the word. You need coverage in the name. You need to know how to command your angels and you just need to know how to take a stand. We are here for you. That number again, 877-281-6297. And I want you to know this, that God loves you. We love you. And wait, this is not just a tagline. According to Brother Copeland, Jesus is Lord, you are blessed. Glory to God.